Chapter 3. In early fall of 1927, a young Mexican man stopped by Warm Springs Insane Asylum in search of work. As a migrant worker, Esteban Garcia had slaved for meager wages in the potato fields of North Dakota and the orange groves of the South. At age 16, he left his family and struck out on his own. Odd jobs in Chicago, Minneapolis, and Sioux Falls drew him westward. Too small for work in the Butte mines, his determination to escape migrant work finally landed him at Warm Springs. Waiting for his interview, Esteban glanced nervously around the waiting room with its tall ceiling and stark walls. It reminded him of the police stations many migrant workers knew all too well. Finally, a huge man with graying hair called Esteban into his office. The man seated himself behind an expansive oak desk and lit up a half-smoked cigar. Esteban sat exposed in a single wooden chair. The portly interviewer cleared his throat as he glanced over Esteban's application. Esteban Martin Garcia, age 17. The balding man read from the application. Without raising his head, he scrutinized the slim Mexican over his bifocals. See, si. I mean yes, Esteban stammered. Well, why haven't you found work in Butte? Senor, they say I am too small. What is your wish to do here? Anything, senor. I work hard. You will see. I will show you. The interview stood smiling. He dwarfed the young Mexican boy. Son, many people think work at this asylum is easy work for good pay. Let me assure you it is neither. The fact is, if you were too small for the mines, you're probably too small to be much use here. Esteban stared up at the immense man with a pleading look. For what am I too small, senor? Let me explain. First, we get by here on a budget that couldn't support half our 2,000 patients if they were in a community. That means our employees are underpaid, overworked, and seldom given much thanks. I do not want big money, senor, the man argued. I want to help people. We are not a rehabilitative facility, Esteban. We are strictly a maintenance facility. We do little beyond feeding and cleaning. In the wards, attendants often restrain violent patients or lift bedridden ones for cleaning. Some patients weigh upwards of 200 pounds. How, Esteban, do you propose to do that? Esteban fidgeted with his pant leg. Senor, everywhere I work I have been small. Big bodies do not work hard if they have small minds. Esteban winced, hoping he had not offended the big man. Pointing at his own head, Esteban continued, My mind is big and works hard. You will see. The interviewer laughed. Determined fellow, aren't you? See, si, senor, can I work now, please? Tell you what, son, I like your attitude, and I'll give you a try. Do you understand what probation is? Probation, Esteban repeated the word, fearful. This was his first test of competency. I think I know. Let's see. The interviewer smiled. Probation is a trial period. I'll hire you for two weeks, and then decide if you can stay. Is that clear? Si, senor, si, senor, Esteban nodded excitedly. And work he did. By spring, Esteban became the favorite of every charge nurse lucky enough to have him on infant's ward. Every day after his shift, Esteban walked around the ward saying goodbye to each child. He always stopped longer at Petey's crib. Leaning on the worn top rail of the crib, Esteban talked to Petey as he would a normal child. Before long, Petey's face broke into a smile whenever Esteban approached. Petey had outgrown Infants Ward a couple of years before, but remained even as an eight-year-old because the ward suited his care better. One day, Esteban nibbled on a Hershey bar as he visited with Petey. Petey's eyes followed the candy bar. Do you like candy? Esteban asked. Here, he broke off a little piece and placed it in Petey's gaping mouth. Immediately, Petey's tongue darted back and forth, chasing the tiny chocolate bit in circles. Brown chocolate melted onto his tongue and palate. Petey looked past Esteban, unable to concentrate on more than the melting wonderfulness he pursued in his mouth. 
From then on, Esteban brought Petey a small piece of chocolate each day when he left. After several months, he started questioning Petey before handing him the chocolate bit. Does Petey want this, he asked. Petey would smile, flopping his two contracted arms and grunting. One day, Esteban asked the charge nurse, What's wrong with the little Petey boy? He's an idiot, the nurse replied plainly. What does that mean? It means he can't think. Esteban shook his head but said nothing. Several days later, Esteban approached, approached Petey's crib after work. Holding out a small piece of chocolate, he asked the customary, Does Petey want this? Flopping his arms and gurgling, Petey waited. Petey, you tell me, you want this? Again, Petey flopped his arms, grimacing and grunting. Petey, do this, Esteban instructed, nodding his head deliberately. One more, Petey flailed his arms, grunting his impatience. Petey, do this, Esteban insisted, nodding his head up and down in a yes motion. Petey skewed his face into a frown and turned his gaze away from Esteban. Okay, okay, here, I'll give Petey chocolate. Esteban poked the piece of chocolate into Petey's mouth. Petey's tongue shoved the chocolate bit onto the sheet. Esteban retrieved it and placed it once more in Petey's mouth. Again, Petey ejected it onto the white sheet along with stringy brown saliva. If Petey doesn't like chocolate, I won't bring any. Esteban turned and walked away. Stopping by the door, he looked back toward Petey. Something bothered him terribly about this child, but he didn't know what. That night, a light from the nurse's station, a glassed-off room at one end of the ward, cast a dim glow across the darkened rows of white cribs. Except for an occasional whimper or cough, the children slept soundly. Down on the south end, in the center crib, one child remained awake. Looking up into the darkness, Petey struggled and fought with his body. Black shadows hid the up-and-down jerking of his face. The following day, as Esteban left the ward at the end of his shift, he stopped without chocolate to say goodbye to Petey. Before Esteban could speak, Petey grunted and jerked his head up and down in an unmistakable yes. Esteban scared, stared. Madre de Cristo, he muttered. Petey, you wait, I'll get chocolate. Running as fast as he could to the nurse's station, Esteban grabbed a chocolate bar from the concession box. Depositing the usual two cents in the can, he ran back to Petey's crib. Today, Petey, you get the whole bar, he announced. Petey grinned as if his face had cracked in half, grunting and flapping his arms like wings. He jerked his head forward and back again and again in a gesture of triumph. Several weeks later, Esteban brought the charge nurse to Petey's bedside. Have something to show you, he said. The nurse watched as the little idiot in bed, number six, grunted and gestured for chocolate. Esteban, is this what you brought me here to see? She asked accusingly. What you're seeing is merely conditioning behavior. Even idiots can be conditioned with bits of food. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. She turned and left. Two sets of eyes watched her as she walked away. Esteban shook his head. Petey, you're no idiot. That same afternoon, a group of civic leaders from Butte toured the facilities at Warm Springs. Always popular on the tour was a walk through the wards. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we have infants. Ward, the superintendent, recited from habit. Please feel free to ask questions. The group remained deathly quiet. Turning at the end of the ward near Petey's crib, a balding man remarked to his colleague in a half-whisper, What a bunch of freaks! Esteban overheard the remark and flushed with anger. They are not freaks, Esteban shouted loudly. They are poor children. The group turned and stared as the two men lowered their heads in embarrassment. The superintendent gave Esteban a severe look. I'll talk to you later, he said. The group, filled, the group filed from the ward, continuing their tour of the facility, fulfilling their civic duties. The following day, Esteban failed to show up for work. 
Each time the charge nurse walked by his crib, Petey grunted and swung his arms wildly. Pleading with his eyes, he jerked his head up and down, back and forth. But without a step on, every subtle gesture had become Petey's language. His way of touching the world was once again seen as the movements of an idiot.